أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and messenger May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions In this segment of the chapter in this set of, of, of verses, Allah Azza wa Jal is showing and highlighting to the deniers two major things. His bounty upon them, His bounty and favor upon mankind, and his ability and perfect capability of creation. After the introduction, Allah Azza wa Jal goes to address issues that are tangible, that they experience, their senses deal with, as if a message to them, if the matter of resurrection is a matter of the unseen that you cannot perceive, you cannot comprehend, then the following are signs, tangible signs that you can see and some you can touch and some you can hear that prove to you the ability of creation. The verses go. Alam Najaril Arumami Hada Waljibala Autada Wakalakuna Kum Azwaja Wajalna Nauma Kum Subata Wajalna Layla Libasa Wajalna Naha Wama Asha وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَّاجًا وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَاءً ثَجَّاجًا لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا have we not made the earth a resting place and the mountains as stakes? And we created you in pairs and made your sleep a means for rest and made the night as clothing and made the day for livelihood and constructed above you seven strong heavens and made therein a burning lamp and sent down from the rain clouds pouring water that we may bring forth thereby grain and vegetation and gardens of entwined growth. Some of these cosmic signs are tangible, as we mentioned. They can touch, some they can see, some they can hear, some they can taste, and so on and so forth. Allah Azza wa Jal, by this, by addressing or highlighting his ability of creating all of this, is sending a message. Number one, my favors are abundant. Number two, 
if I am capable of creating such creation, then though they were in the state of non-existence, then resurrecting the dead after death is much simpler than initiating the creation. The first verse, verse number six, have we not made the earth a resting place? Allah Azza wa Jal facilitated the earth for us. He made it an easy means of living. Shaykh al Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi alayhi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, that Allah Azza wa Jal neither made the earth rigid and rough where people cannot cultivate it nor walk on it nor did He make it so soft that they cannot benefit from it. He subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> paved it for them in the best fashion and manner for their utilization. Al-Qurtubi rahmatullahi alayhi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, Allah Azza wa Jal proves with this verse that creating the earth facilitated for life with its water, air, and fruits Proves with that his ability of resurrecting the dead. Because resurrection, resurrection is much simpler and easier than initiating the creation of earth. The following verse, we're still on earth. It addresses the mountains or speaks about the mountains. Allah Azza wa Jal says what means and the mountains as stakes. Shaykh al Uthaymeen said Allah Azza wa Jal instilled the mountains in earth as the iron rod or pin is pinned down to earth to control and firmly establish the tent so it doesn't move and it doesn't collapse. Allah Azza wa Jal placed the mountains on earth to keep it steady for mankind, to keep it firm for mankind. And let's just reflect on earthquakes and the shortness of earthquakes and the amount of destruction that results from earthquakes for a simple movement. A very simple movement. And had Allah Azza wa Jal let mountains loose to move left and right, then what would be left? What would remain from this poor, weak, incapable human being? Such poor and weak bodies and harsh hearts that deny the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If any of you have traveled around in hilly areas and have been on top of mountains, would relate to what I'm saying. When you go, when you go up, drive up or climb up a mountain and you look at it and you look below, you can't help yourself. If your heart was alive, you cannot help yourself but glorify Allah and cry. You cannot help yourself 
seeing these tall mountains and beautiful creation, you cannot help yourself if your heart was alive, but to go down in prostration before the glory and might of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's another sign that proves with no doubt that Allah Azza wa Jal is the only one worthy of being worshipped. It also proves that Allah Azza wa Jal is fully capable of resurrecting the dead. and holding people to account on the Day of Judgment. Then Allah Azza wa Jal addresses an issue that people can relate to even more. He addresses them He addresses the creation of man. And we created you in pairs. <coughs> now this word, pairs, was interpreted differently by different scholars. Ibn Atiyah rahmatullah alayhi said, it means different colors, different languages, and different shapes. Al-Qurtubi rahmatullah alayhi holds the opinion that pairs refers to male and female, tall and short, attractive and not very pleasant looking, and so on and so forth. And the challenge in this verse, the challenge in the creation of mankind, comes from the fact, as the scholar said, that all these pairs, all these different types of people with the differences we mentioned, these diversified types of people come to or from one pair. They all go back to Adam alayhi salam and Hawa. And it's the ability of Allah and perfection of creation that He created the branches from these two to be so diversified. As another challenge to the deniers of the message, to the deniers of Islam, to the deniers of resurrection and the day of judgment. Another point that is extracted from this verse is that it is impossible for the Creator who created such diversified people or types of people to have a partner. It proves His ability, perfection, and it proves His oneness. Then Allah Azza wa Jal goes on to address other matters that they experience on daily basis. And made your sleep a means for rest. See, man cannot go on continuously, non-stop, working, or rather without sleep, because sleep interrupts the tiredness a person faces due to working. If a person was to sit on a chair, doing nothing, exerting no effort, continuously, he would lose his mind. 
if he doesn't sleep. Let alone those who have to work to earn their livelihood. So Allah Azza wa Jal is giving them this, this sign, reminding them with this favor, the favor of putting them to sleep. And if any of you ever experienced lack of sleep, the inability of going, of falling to sleep, would realize how great a bounty it is to simply put your head on the pillow and just fall asleep. It's a great favor. It is indeed a great bounty from Allah Azza wa Jal that we sleep. The scholars mention few words, a few points, few wisdoms related to uh, sleeping. They said, Allah Azza wa Jal reminds mankind with death by the example of sleep or sleeping. Because when you go to sleep, when you're deep asleep, you're disconnected from life. That's why it, is, it was called the minor death. Sleep is called minor death. When you're sleeping, you're disconnected. Yet, your organs are functioning. Your heart is beating, blood is circulating, the lungs are pumping air, everything is all right. But you are detached from life. There is no contact between you and life. And this is the example of the dead person who will lose contact with life with one difference between him and the sleeping person is that his organs as well will not be functioning. Who is the one who maintains your heart and mind pumping, keeping me and you alive while we're sleeping? Who is the one who keeps our lungs pumping, air in and out, inhale and exhale, to maintain life while we're asleep and we are detached totally from, right, from life? It is Allah Azza wa Jalla. It is Allah Azza wa Jalla. And Allah Azza wa Jalla is establishing this point. This is a great favor and bounty upon you people. So take heed. So reflect to the magnificent Creator, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. With this we will conclude. And inshaAllah we will resume in the following session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك